D, 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 D. Good morning, Interweb. This is follow up to my previous video, Free Word Order in OA featuring Bibliorating. If you have not seen that video, you're going to need to check it out. Otherwise, none of this is going to make any sense whatsoever. At 105, they talk about Hawkins' postpositional universal. I can't find this on Google. Can you help me? Check out Word Order Universals by John A. Hawkins. Links in all the usual places. Can the nominative and the accusative have the same case marking? Yes, you can see this happen in German. Compare der Hund sieht den Hund and das Mädchen sieht das Mädchen. The first sentence means the dog sees the dog. The dog, that's the subject, gets the nominative masculine article der. And the dog, that's the object, gets the accusative masculine article den. We have overt case marking there versus den. Nominative and accusative here appear different. Whereas in the second sentence, das Mädchen sieht das Mädchen, the girl sees the girl, both the nominative neuter article and the accusative neuter article are das. Das Mädchen, subject, sieht das Mädchen, object. Nominative, accusative, quote, same case marking. In the first sentence, we could technically move everything around and we would still know what is what. Whereas in the second sentence, we need to rely heavily on word order to know which girl is doing the seeing and which girl is being seen. I am learning Irish and this confounding language is a beast. Why did you say quidge instead of quidge in the Irish example? To back that up a little bit, the question is basically asking why was my pronunciation off in Lenition environments in Irish. So I'd like to explain Lenition first before answering the question, just because it's a super dope thing that Irish does and other Celtic languages too. So in English, we have nouns, correct? Like the word band. And no matter where those nouns occur and in what grammatical environments, they're always the same, right? Band, the band, at the band. The word never changes. But in the Celtic languages, the initial consonant sound in certain environments may mutate based on those environments. So if we were to like Irishize or Celticize English, you would get band, the vand, at the mand, where band, vand, and mand are all still the word band. They just change their sound slightly based on their context, which is just super dope. I'll leave links to the Wikipedia page on this. Go check it out. It's Awesome. So the question is basically asking, what's with my pronunciation in these mutation environments? So the example from the last video was this, with the word quidge here being preceded by the word mo. Mo is a possessive and it's one of those grammatical environments that trigger these mutations. So it's wrong to say mo quidge, which is what I said. It should have been mo quidge. That initial consonant sound has to change because of the mo trigger. So why did I pronounce it quidge and not quidge? Bad pronunciation, essentially. That said, I think it's a little bit more complicated though because I'm doing an Irish course at the moment and the professor is a speaker of Southern Irish and she very often will like fail to the night in certain circumstances. So I suspect there's a bit of dialect happening here as well. Chances are it's just bad pronunciation on my part, but like there is a bit of complexity there as well, I think. I think English does do topic first with the syntax of bones, dogs eat them or the sandwich, the dog ate it. Yeah, we can kind of mimic topic prominent like constructions in English using these kind of syntaxes, but it's worth noting that they're non-standard, they're pretty stylized and they're pretty limited. We call this marked speech. So it's wrong to say that English does do topic prominence because it's very unnatural. Like think about it this way, if you were to write an entire piece of prose using only the syntax that you describe, it would be very unnatural and quite hard to uh, understand and follow, etc. Whereas in proper topic prominent languages, this sort of construction would be just the norm and considered completely normal. So yeah, it's this thing between like what's kind of considered normal, natural default utterances and what are considered to be marked and stylized utterances. Have you ever looked into the calls of Carolina chickadees? They are interesting as they have the most complex calls of the tit a family of songbirds, the only non-human animals with documented compositional syntax and grammar. I'm not super aware of linguistics, but it might be interesting to try and get a non-human animal as an independent comparison for fantasy species. Their biological ability to make two different sounds at once could lead to interesting results. So I had no idea about the Carolina chickadee until I read your comment, and then I went down an internet rabbit hole. 
and boy was it interesting, so I'm just gonna talk about it here even though it has nothing to do with the previous video. This is a really simplified overview of what these birds are, are doing. So I'm gonna leave a link to a Scientific American article in the description, go check it out. It's got way more detail to it. Basically, these birds have like five sound packets that they use. Scientists have labeled them A, E, B, C, D, H, and D. And the sort of syntax or grammar that these birds are using is that these packets must appear in this order, any of them can be omitted and any of them can be repeated as long as the order is maintained. So like A, A, A would be a valid construction as would A, B, D, 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 and even E, B, D, H, D, H, D, 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 but not something like D, D, C, E, A, 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 because we're breaking the order. And that's already really dope, but it gets way cooler. Apparently, if a bird's utterances is very A heavy, it seems to signal that there's a predator around. So A is kind of like the word predator, which is nuts to think about. E heavy utterances seem to indicate that the speaker, the bird, is off the ground. C heavy utterances seem to indicate that the speaker is in flight. And D heavy utterances seem to indicate that there's a perched predator and or that there's food. Which again, it's just, it's just mental. C, 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 D, 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 D. Hey, I'm flying around and there's some food over there. That's crazy. Now I'm, I'm being a little bit hyperbolic here. It's not like they're, the birds are talking with words to one another, but it's still cool nonetheless. Might be fun for some like non-human conlang. As for the producing two tones at once thing, myself and Bill McGrath uh, recently reviewed China Mieville's Embassy Town on the podcast, in which the central alien species is one that produces two tones at once. And that's a fundamental part of their language. So like the word Edgar would be completely meaningless to them, but Gar. Ed would not. And it leads this whole cool thing where humans have to like genetically breed twins that are like two people, two vocal tracks, but like of the same mind, one person, and teach them how to speak the capital L language to be able to interact with these aliens. It's really, really interesting. You should definitely go check out that book. Anyways, that was that. Turns out talking about word order eventually leads to bird song. It's pretty cool. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this follow-up. See you soon for the next video. Until next time, Edgar out.